affects the performance of the thermoacoustic Stirling engine still needs to increase significantly in order to provide meaningful support for our solar power system in winter. To achieve this, I designed a better burner, enlarged coolers and a finer mesh regenerator. I hope this will result in a significant increase in performance and bring me closer to my goal of 300 watts of continuous power as with my kinematic Stirling engines. For months I have been working with the thermoacoustic Stirling engine trying to increase its performance. I have recently improved my construction techniques and can now manufacture almost all components except for the hot part of the heater from 3D printed parts. Modern engineering filaments and post-treatment with annealing and coating with Dictol makes the parts durable and suitable for use up to 12 bar or 175 psi overpressure. The output is still low and it's almost completely consumed by friction and losses during power conversion. However, the engine is still in the very early stages of development and every watt I gain through improvements now goes directly into the power output. My kinematic Stirling engines also had very low power output at the beginning. Once they are ready for pressure charging, their performance will improve significantly. A lot is still very experimental and I am trying out everything possible to get a better feel for the thermoacoustic Stirling engine. I am still a long way from being able to optimize the thermoacoustic gas cycle theoretically. But I have now started experimenting with Delta EC in a virtual machine. After heating the heater for a long time using only a soldering torch, I have finally built a very simple but practical ring burner. This is, of course, a nightmare in terms of efficiency, but that's fine for the short test runs. Once the final design is ready, I will build a more effective burner in a vertical orientation, as many of you have suggested time and again. That's just too impractical for me at the moment, as the engine layout is constantly changing. As expected, the Stirling engine performs very well with the new burner. In particular, the surrounding components, which are sensitive to heat, do not become as hot. The old coolers are only half as long as the heater, so I am now trying longer coolers with more than double the heat transfer surface area and significantly higher cooling water flow rate. This should have made the engine run better, but strangely enough, the performance was very poor and even with the smallest stepper motor as a generator, the Stirling engine did not run well. After several test runs, I was disappointed and also tried out the new regenerator made of finer wire mesh. It now consists of 100 mesh instead of 40 mesh stainless steel me wire mesh and I had the opportunity to cut the discs on a laser, which was very convenient. Turning 100 discs of wire mesh on the lace was a lot of work before and the edges were sometimes a little frayed. But here too, the performance in the test runs was disappointing, even with the smallest stepper motors, and I was somewhat at a loss. I experimented with many things. The bidirectional impulse turbine ran quite fast, but it would be impossible to power even my smallest generator. The first linear generator, which is far too weak, ran very fast. And without the deflection lever, the engine ran very powerful and had difficulty keeping the piston in the cylinder and managing the vibrations of the unbalanced motor. When I finally removed the balancing shaft, the engine ran with a lot of power and I gradually installed larger and larger generators until even my largest stepper motor was driven very powerfully. Finally, the performance was satisfactory and the improvements paid off. I now need to find out why the balancing shaft slows down the engine so much, as balancing is essential for the high power that is now generated. I cannot detect any significant additional friction, 
Perhaps the oscillating counterweight is disturbing the thermoacoustic resonance. To this purpose, I'm going to do a few experiments and maybe consider using a very lightweight plastic piston without balancing. The use of a membrane or similar device, which you have repeatedly suggested, is also a possibility, but I'm not sure how to build a certain degree of adaptability to the highly variable performance of the engine. The stroke and position of the piston can be adjusted, which is more difficult with a membrane or diaphragm. Do you have any suggestions for this purpose? I've also noticed that the efficiency of the oscillating stepper motor is very poor. The crankshaft oscillates at a very small angle of approximately 30 degrees, generating hardly any power. This brings me back to the linear generator, which is eventually going to be used anyway. To keep friction losses and afford to a minimum, a lightweight piston with relatively small magnets without balancing would be ideal. Would a flat design have advantages over a radial linear generator in this case? I still haven't managed to find a source for electrical sheet metal or silicon steel and I'm on the lookout for large transformers to dismantle and use the iron core. The construction of iron cores from sheet metal for an effective linear generator is very complex. Is it an option to cast iron chips with epoxy resin into molds or would this result in very poor efficiency? The engine is now at a stage of development where I'm seriously planning its pressure charging. This enables a significant increase in performance. To do this, the crankcase must be closed and the engine can no longer be started by hand. The most elegant solution would be to start the engine electrically using the generator. With a stepper motor, implementation would be simple if the motor power is sufficient. But with a linear motor, it becomes more complicated. Probably you would have to induce an oscillation until the Stirling engine starts up. Otherwise, it must be started from the outside using a sealed mechanism. The starting problem with a closed crankcase has been bothering me for a long time and I would be very grateful for your ideas on this issue as well. A special thank you goes to my channel members and supporters on Patreon. You motivate me greatly and help build so much. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to your comments on the many questions.